As a company, Bud Light has essentially gone into hiding ever since their partnership with womanhood uh, cosplayer Dylan Mulvaney was first announced. They put out a, a brief statement meekly defending their decision. But other than that, they've basically been silent. Uh, Bud Light's Twitter account hasn't tweeted anything since the controversy began as the beer brand faces increasing backlash and calls for boycotts. In summary, the rollout for this marketing campaign has been, uh, you might say, less than seamless. And now we know who we can thank for this brilliant idea, or who Bud Light can thank anyway. Although the company has, has said very little to defend their Mulvaney endorsement deal since the deal was made public, we only need to go back a few days before the announcement to get a more in-depth defense and explanation of it. A couple of weeks ago, the vice president of Bud Light, a woman named Alyssa Heinerscheid, appeared on an on a obscure YouTube podcast called Make Yourself at Home. And there she went into great depth about her experience being Bud Light's first female VP, something she's very proud of. And about midway through the conversation, she begins to explain the marketing shift that she is engineering in the company. And this is an effort to be more inclusive and more, quote unquote, representative. Here's a, the piece of that discussion that has since gone viral. Listen. I'm a businesswoman. Mm -hmm. I had a really clear job to do when yeah. I took over Bud Light. And it was, this brand is in decline. It's been in decline for a really long time. And if we do not attract young drinkers to come and drink this brand, there will be no future for Bud Light. So I had this super clear mandate. It's like, mm -hmm. we need to evolve and elevate this incredibly iconic brand. And my, what I brought to that was a belief in, okay, what does is, what is, what is evolve and elevate mean? It means inclusivity. It means shifting the tone. It means having a campaign that's truly inclusive and feels lighter and brighter and different and appeals to women and to men mm -hmm. and representation is it sort of the heart of evolution you've got to see people who reflect you in the work and we had this hangover i mean bud light had been kind of a brand of fratty kind of out of touch humor and it was really important <laughs> that we had another approach so we see, we see right away from the outset that this woman has, of course, completely misdiagnosed the problem. Yes, Bud Light's sales and market share have been declining over the years, but she's somehow determined that the waning interest in the brand is due to its frat boy image. You know, customers have stopped drinking Bud Light, Alyssa decided, because they're concerned about its toxic masculinity and its insufficient focus on diversity and equity. So she imagines a scenario where the once typical Bud Light drinker you know, is at the liquor store scanning the options at the store of all the different beers, uh, almost reaches for the Bud Light 30 pack, but then pulls back and says to himself, never mind, I'm only buying beer from companies that have displayed an outward commitment to inclusivity and representation. And then she imagines the consumer going up to the cashier and asking where they keep their trans affirming beverage options. But, you know, I can't say for sure that that scenario has never played out anywhere on earth, but this is not exactly how it typically works in the real world. The truth is that Bud Light is declining because the product is terrible, first of all, and people have other options. You know, it tastes like carbonated tap water flavored with notes of old hay shoveled off the floor of somebody's barn, and that's why it's not selling as well anymore. You know, before the explosion of the, the craft beer market, people drank Anheuser-Busch products because they were forced, basically they were forced to. They were forced to choose between um, that brand of piss water or some other brand of piss water. Most Beer drinkers didn't even know back in those days, back in the old dark ages, what beer was supposed to actually taste like. They didn't know until the proliferation of craft beer and IPAs. And now consumers can pay 3 or $4 more for real beer. The effect on Bud Light sales, it's similar to the effect on uh, what the effect on Outback Steakhouse would be if a restaurant that actually knows how to cook a steak moved in right next door and only charged a couple of dollars extra. Just a very bad situation. Meanwhile, compounding Bud Light's problems is that the fact that sales of beer in general, all types, have dipped in recent years, as many younger people unfortunately choose to smoke weed instead. So all told, Bud Light is facing many challenges and many challengers, and uh, increasingly it's losing that contest. That's the real problem. But it's not the problem that Alyssa Heinerscheid wants to solve. For her, the, the only problem that she'll ever recognize when it comes to Bud Light or anything else is insufficient wokeness. Have you ever read the fine print that appears when you start browsing in incognito mode? It says that your activity might still be visible to your employer, your school, your internet service provider. It kind of defeats the purpose, you would think. 
So to actually stop people from monitoring your online activity, you need to do what I do and use ExpressVPN. Think about all the times you've used Wi-Fi at a coffee shop, hotel, even a friend's house. Without ExpressVPN, every site you visit can be logged by the admin of that network. That's still true, even when you're in incognito mode. ExpressVPN is an app that encrypts all of your network data and reroutes it through a network of secure servers so that your online, pri uh, online activity stays private. ExpressVPN works on all your devices and it's super easy to use. The app has one button, you tap the button and you're in. It's really that simple. So stop letting strangers invade your online privacy. Protect yourself at expressvpn.com slash Matt Walsh Show. Use my link at expressvpn.com slash Matt Walsh Show to get three extra months free. That's expressvpn.com slash Matt Walsh Show. I want to continue watching one more minute of this interview. The clip we just watched is the bit that went viral. But if you go to the YouTube channel and you, you look at the actual um, interview, the, it continues on, this part of the conversation continues on for another minute. And you hear something that I think is, is kind of important. Uh, listen to this. Long story short, Super Bowl spot, fast forward, I cast an incredible female choreographer who just brought incredibly positive, amazing energy to the spot. We cast Miles Teller and his wife, Kelly Teller, but it was really crucial to me that if you see that spot, Kelly is, Kelly is the heartbeat of that spot. You're seeing this whole experience through Kelly. She's the beating heart. She, I would sort of argue, is sort of what propels you through that experience. And, and that was intentional. Um, and then we had another really fun spot. First spot out of the gate was the first time ever we'd had a female protagonist in this really cool, she was sort of cool as hell bobbing and weaving through a bar. But anyway, listen, I'm not going to pretend that there isn't so much more work to do from a business results perspective and, of course, from a representation perspective. But I feel like you you have to put your money where your mouth is when you're trying to evolve a brand and elevate it and bring in new consumers. So that's been incredibly important to me. So there she's explaining the thought process behind Bud Light's most recent Super Bowl ad campaign, uh, which did not feature Dylan Mulvaney. That commercial, the one she's referring to, is uh, the one where the actor Miles Teller uh, comes in the room and, and dances with his wife to, uh, while she's listening to hold music. That's what the commercial is. Here's, here's like 10 seconds of it. Watch. Okay. Now, the interesting thing is that if anyone had watched that ad when it first aired, and then complained that it was woke, you know, they would have been mocked for it. They would have been treated as a paranoid conspiracy theorist if they had claimed that the Bud Light Super Bowl ad, uh, that that one where they're dancing to hold music, had a liberal bias, if anyone had said that. Uh, after all, just a commercial with two people dancing in their living rooms. What's woke about that? And yet she proudly admits that she chose that ad because it helps further her agenda to feminize the company and bring it into alignment with her left-wing values. It was just done in that case in a relatively subtle way. And that's always more clever when they make it a little bit, a little bit more subtle. And that's going to be more, you know, then, then you have the, the subtle messaging, which gets into people's minds without them even realizing. But also, they put themselves in a position where if anyone who's slightly perceptive notices what they're doing and says it out loud... Everyone else could say, what are you talking about? Don't be ridiculous. There's no agenda here. Except there is. They'll tell you. The Dylan Mulvaney sponsorship was, on the other hand, far less subtle. And now they're paying the price for really just a lack of subtlety. Except that from Vice President Alyssa's perspective, they're not paying a price at all. Because she obviously is not really concerned with Bud Light's health as a company or its sales or its long-term prospects. She almost certainly doesn't even like the product, probably hasn't had a single sip of it in her life. You could work at a liquor store for 30 years and never once see someone who looks like Alyssa Heinerscheid or has a name like Alyssa Heinerscheid walk up to the counter with a six-pack of Bud Light. I'm not sure if I've ever seen a woman drink Bud Light, ever, in my entire life. She doesn't like the product. She doesn't like the company. She doesn't like the customer base. She is yet another liberal woman put into a position of power within an institution despite not understanding the fundamental point of that institution and hating whatever she does understand about it. You know, we've discussed in depth why these companies go woke, uh, why almost every major company goes woke, has, has already gone woke long, long ago. Um, and all those points still stand. But here's another reason, just as pertinent. Every institution in our country is being taken over by people who hate 
the institutions they're in charge of. This is true in the corporate world. This is true in government. Um, This is especially true in the military. This is true in many of our churches. This is true even down to the level of the family, which is the most fundamental societal institution, where many families are led by mothers and fathers who have no interest in marriage or in parenting. They treat their children like pets or fashion accessories, hence the proliferation of quote-unquote trans kids. So across the spectrum, you find institutions that aren't really uh, collapsing you know, from any pressure from without so much as imploding. It's a controlled demolition, an intentional act of sabotage from within. Bud Light is just one example, certainly not the most significant or important. It's a symptom of, a, of an underlying thing. And it's no surprise to see this happening as the left seizes hold of the culture. Hatred of societal institutions has always been one of the essential animating principles of the left. And self-hatred, too. Now, as I've said before, leftism is a religion of self-loathing. It teaches boys to hate their masculinity. It teaches girls to hate their femininity. It teaches white people to hate their race. It teaches Americans to hate their country. It teaches Westerners to hate their history and heritage and so on. That's where you find the kind of engineered self-loathing at its deepest levels. Closer to the surface is Bud Light and all other woke corporations managed by executives who hate the companies they run and especially hate the customers that they serve. And hopefully, at least now, that feeling will be mutual. And I'll do it for the show today or for this part of the show anyways. We'll go over to the members block and become a member today by using code Walsh at checkout for two months free on all annual plans. Hope to see you there. If not, talk to you tomorrow. Godspeed. Godspeed.